Hey guys, Abraham here. Today we're going to be modeling an M51 grenade inside of Maya. I'm going to be showing you the whole modeling process and we're going to be learning some very nice tips and tricks. So let's get to it. Today we're going to be modeling a grenade. We're going to be doing a World War II grenade and I'm going to be showing you the whole process that we as three artists follow in order to create a very interesting and very complete piece. Okay, so since this is the first video in the series, the first thing I want to do is I want to create a project. I'm going to go here into file, project window. We're going to create a new project. We're going to call this next to live because we're recording this completely. Well, not live for you, of course, it's a recording, but everything is just on one take. We're going to be doing this one on one. So if you want to follow along, make sure to open Maya and get yourself ready for this whole process. So we're going to save this project as next to life. And this is where we're going to be saving all of our scenes, all of our image planes, every render that we do, everything that we do is going to be on this specific scene. So I'm going to hit accept. And now we're going to go into file set project and we're going to set this project that we just created there we go so now everything we do here inside of maya is going to be happening inside of this project which is very important for organization i'm going to go into google and as you can see i've already uh, looked for this m51 grenade there's a lot of good reference but usually what you want to get is a reference that um shows the whole thing like or as much details as possible right from your from your elements so for instance this one right here this one's really good it's a little bit low in resolution but it is actually fine this one's a little bit better though. It's a little bit higher rest. So I'm just gonna click right click, save image as, and I'm gonna navigate all the way to the project that we just created. And we're gonna save this as a source image. We're gonna call this M51 grenade. There we go. And the first thing we need to do is we need to get this thing inside of Maya so that we can actually work with it, right? We're gonna be using something called an image plane, which will give us a very nice uh, idea of where to model all the things. So I'm going to go into view and I'm going to hit image plane, import image here on the viewport menus. And as you can see, it points directly to the source images folder of the project that I just created. By the way, if you're creating a project inside of like the basic default Maya, it's probably not going to be on an extra drive. It's going to be on documents, Maya projects. So just keep that in mind. I have a couple of extra drives. So that's where I'm saving all my projects. And I'm just going to hit open and there we go. Now, the problem is we just got this image in the front view or in the perspective view rather. So as you can see, uh, we turn the floor around and things are not working as we expect. So I'm going to delete this. I'm going to hit space, click on Maya, go to my front view. And now on this view, this is where I'm going to actually uh, have our, uh, why do we have two outliners? I'm going to go view image plane, import image, and we're going to import this M51 grenade on this particular camera. Very important. Now this image, as you can see, is not uh, orthographical, right? Like it's not a perfect front view, but it's good enough that it's gonna allow us to model most of the things to proportion. And then we're gonna use a little bit of a magic here and there to make sure everything fits nicely. Now, every anytime I start a project, I ask myself the following question. How many parts are there on the, on the element? Like how many moving parts are we gonna need to model in order to create this specific element that we want? And I can see, of course, the body of the grenade, I can see the ring, I can see this like handle, I can see this like sort of a cable pin thing. Uh, there's another one here, it's probably the same one going through the inside of the grenade. Then there's this like pivot point over here, like a hinge. So there's several parts. Uh, one very common mistake that people make at the beginning or the beginner level is they try to make everything from a single piece. And that's that's completely wrong. Like we don't want to have just one piece. We can have multiple pieces as long as the pieces that we're modeling look and are modeled nicely. So let's start with probably the easiest one right now, which is this X shape uh, form that we have for the grenade. The first question you need to ask yourself is which shape of the basic primitives that we have here on the poly modeling is the easiest one to use as a starting point. And in this case, I would say a sphere is probably the best one. So I'm going to create the sphere. I'm going to scale it up until we get like that middle width, like the radius right there. And I'm going to scale it up on the Y axis as well to get this sort of like X shape right there. Now you can see that the egg actually doesn't go all the way down. So I'm probably going to make this smaller probably shorter, just move it up a little bit so that we match this concept as closely as possible. Now, don't worry too much about following the concept perfectly because remember, this is a photograph that was not taken perfectly from the front. So there's gonna be a little bit of perspective distortion and we as artists need to find out where that distortion is so that we don't follow it exactly, right? Now on the top side here, I'm gonna erase all of these faces. So I'm just right click, go into face mode, oh, face mode right here select all of those faces and delete. And now that thing is hollow. And I'm also going to do the same thing with this bottom faces right here. So right click face mode, grab this guys right here, probably the next one as well. There we go. 
and delete. Because as you can see here, once the X shape ends, we get this like cylinder going down and then this little like lip. So I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna go into edge mode now, grab this edges right here, and I'm gonna hit my extrude option right here. The extrude of course will create new volume. So I'm just gonna bring this down roughly to about this uh, place right here. And then I'm gonna extrude down again, double U and move this thing down a little bit more. So that's roughly the, the size that we want. I'm gonna grab this edge. I think I'm gonna bring it down a little bit, probably something like there. This one can go a little bit lower. And as you can see, we have like a lip right here. Now, how can we create that lip in the in the fastest way possible? Well, first of all, this image, oh, I'm just gonna push it back, there we go. So if we go to this newly created element right here, this little lip that we have, one thing I can do is I can select this faces, select the ring face, which is click, shift, double click on the next face, and that's gonna select the whole ring, and I'm just gonna extrude and bring this thing out like this. That's gonna give us that nice little lip that we have there on the bottom of the of the grenade. Uh, if you think or feel like this thing is a little bit too high, which I personally think it is, I'm just gonna bring this up a little bit more right there. That's a little bit better. Now you can see that the lip that we have there is rounded. So I'm gonna go to this edge right here. I'm gonna hit the bevel button, which is gonna round off the corners. I'm gonna add probably a second segment and bring the fraction a little bit up like that so that it's uh, um, rounder. I'm gonna grab this guy right here and I'm actually gonna extrude it out, like scale it out a little bit just to get this very nice floor going. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, how are we gonna, how are we gonna fix the inside, right? Like, we can actually round this. I think I wanna round this guy as well. So I'm just gonna bevel this, add one more segment and make it smaller fraction, something like this. That way we get this very nice round element over here. So how do we fix this hole, right? Like, we definitely need this thing to be uh, completely closed. So, so we need to find a way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all the edges. I'm gonna extrude and I'm gonna go with thickness up a little bit and then with offset up as well. So we create this sort of lip right there. I'm gonna do one more extrusion. Let's push this up with W and I'm gonna do one more extrusion. Control E is a shortcut that you can very easily use to repeat the extrusion and now push this all the way in like this. Now in order to close this hole, I'm gonna use a technique that I use quite a bit which is double click the edge, go into mesh, fill hole to fill the hole Select the face and go into Edit Mesh and hit Poke. And there we go. The whole thing is closed now. And we're gonna do something very similar up here. And the reason we wanna close things off is usually meshes work a little bit better when they're watertight. Watertight means that there's a mesh that's completely closed off. There's no hole through which water could come in or out of the object. And, and that usually for shading purposes and for UVs and everything, it usually works better. Having like thin uh, geometries like this makes uh, or, or could generate some issues on the rendering side of things. So what I'm gonna do here is something very similar. I'm just gonna grab this whole thing, control E to extrude, offset and thickness to bring it in like this. Probably something like, like this. And then control E again, offset and thickness. And then we're gonna go mesh, fill hole, select this face, edit mesh, and we're gonna say poke. And there we go. Now you can see on the details there that there's a little bit of a lip there, very, very important. So that's the kind of details that you as a 3D artist need to always check out, right? Like one of the things that are gonna separate you from a great 3D artist is the fact that you're gonna be able to pinpoint things that some people might miss. And by you adding those things into your model, you're gonna be way, way better, right? So I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna bevel this thing right here, make the fraction smaller. And then what I can do is I can grab this ring of faces, control E, offset, control E, and push it out a little bit, just to create a little bit of a lip there. I can even go to these borders and hit a uh, bevel, just to round them off a little bit more, like that. Because I know that when I press number three, which is our smooth mode, we're gonna get this very nice effect. See that? Close to what we have right there. So that's what we're going for. As you can see, we need a little bit of a support edge down here because by pressing number three, we get this like a base looking shape and I don't want that. You can see that there's a very hard line down here on the on the bottom of the, of the element. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into edit mesh, sorry, mesh tools, insert edge loop, and I'm gonna insert an edge loop right here on the top, like that. So that when I press number three, we're gonna get a, a sharp line right there where the, where the shape of the uh, grenade ends. 
And there we go. That's a, that's a very good uh, position, I would say. I think we can actually push this guy out a little bit more. So I'm going to go into vertex mode, grab all of this vertex, and I'm going to hit control and click on this like uh, green uh, element. I'm just going to push them out to flare out the, the base of the grenade a little bit more. I think that looks, that looks nice. Now you can see that we have this very nice line going through the grenade, right? Like this reinforcement uh, piece of uh, metal. Now this one is right about here, but it's not the exact thickness that we have. So I'm going to use my cut tool. And by pressing control when using the cut tool, you're going to be able to insert an edge loop like this. It's pretty similar to using the insert edge loop. So I'm going to go with something like this, which is roughly the, the thickness of the line. Now I'm going to grab faces, grab all that ring, control E to extrude it out, give it the thickness that it needs. And you can see that the borders are rounded. So I'm going to go into edge mode, grab these two guys, and I'm going to round them off. Probably add one segment there just to make sure it's a little bit softer. Increase the fraction again to make it softer. And now when I press number three, look at this beautiful thing. Got it? So this is a very good step for so far. Like we've got a very good progress. We have the first part of our grenade pretty much ready, which is the, the body of the grenade. This text that you're seeing here, that's something that definitely goes inside the, the texture of the element. So I'm not going to worry about that just yet. Uh, I do see a little bit of an extra detail here, like another like a line on this uh, particular area. So I'm going to add one line here. Grab this faces, and I'm just going to do an extrusion, pushing it inwards like this. And that's just going to give me a little bit of an extra detail, as you can see there. If I want this line to be more pronounced, I can also go here with my cut tool, add one line there that's going to give a support edge. Support edges are lines that are going to um, kind of hold the edge closer together. And that's going to make sure that when you press number three, which is a smooth mode, uh, you're going to get a sharper line. So the more lines that are closer together in a model will give you sharper looking lines. Keep that in mind whenever you're doing any sort of like hard surface stuff. If you want things to be like really, really sharp, for instance, maybe here, I can add a couple of extra support lines and it's going to give me a very, very sharp line on the base of the grenade, like you see right there. Now, see how we get this uh, sort of like pinch on the bottom side here, like it's 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 very subtle, but the distance here is a little bit off. So I'm just gonna move this thing down a little bit, and that should yep that should help alleviate that small pinch. So I want I want the shadow of the object to be like very very nice, very very smooth. Now this is not it. Some people stop right here. They finish the model. They they're like perfect. We're good, and they jump onto the next part. Don't do that. I want you guys to be great artists. And one of the things, one of, one of the abilities that a good artist will always have is organization. So I want you to be very clean, very organized. What are you going to do? You're going to center the pivot point, delete the history of the object, freeze the transformation so that everything is clean here, and you're going to properly rename what the object is. So in this case, this object is called uh, grenade body. If I want to be super specific, I can call this M51 grenade body. I usually like to add a prefix to the whole thing. So this would be, especially for games, I, I work in games quite a bit. So I will call this SM, which is static mesh, uh, M51 grenade body. So that way, if anyone opens this scene, and for some reason, this guy is not where it's supposed to be, anyone can come in here and just zero out the transforms, and it's going to go back to exactly the place that I intended to be, which is in the center of the grid right here. And there we go. We have this first part of the of the body of the grenade ready. So now we're going to jump onto the next section, which is the, the upper part. And this is probably the most complicated section, because as you can see, there's a lot of things going on. One of the main things that people freak out about whenever they're modeling pretty much anything is that they think, again, that they need to model everything from a single piece. Don't do that. Just, just think about how things are made in the real world. And based on that, try to mimic how would you how you would model them in this uh, digital world, okay? So we can start simple. Let's start simple. Let's start with this guy right here, which is just a ring. As you can see, it's not a perfect ring, so it's not just a, a torus that we can place here because you can see that the, that the metal is cut here. So it's more like a, like a spiral that's been uh, cut at a specific part. So I'm going to go into Create, Polygon Primitives, and I'm going to select this helix. I'm going to bring the helix up. Rotate this 90 degrees so that's facing us. And then I'm going to go into the inputs. People underestimate the inputs that uh, primitives have because you can actually create some very intricate shapes just with inputs. So I'm going to go with radius, and that's the first thing I'm going to increase. I'm going to decrease the, um, the height. Let's go to the perspective view. There we go. So we definitely need a high radius. 
you can see the little coil there. So there we go. Let's increase the width first. Now we can increase. Actually, no, we don't need that much of a radius. It is going to be thick. Right now it has three coils. I don't need three coils. I'll probably need just like 1.5 or something. Yeah, something like this. A little bit more. And I want things to be slightly more apart, right? Like you can see how there's a little bit of overlap right here on the on the elements. And I don't want that. I want things to be the way they would be made on the real world. So I'm going to go into height. I'm going to push the height. What I'm doing here is I'm, I'm pressing the name of the element. And then with middle mouse, I'm just dragging from left to right. And that's a, an interactive way of changing this sort of thing. And that's it. Once you press number three, I probably need to reduce the height a little bit. And there we go. Like we have a ring that that's it. Like the only thing I need to do now is I can move it to into position and scale it up so that we fit the exact same uh, distance. Now you can see that the thing cuts right here. So a good idea would be to to make sure that the end of our loop is right about there. Now uh, I can see that my loop is inverted. Now these are the sort of things that sometimes when you're in a studio environment, you might not worry that much about it. It's, it's just a loop, right? However, it's always good to be very analytical. So I'm just gonna uh, rotate this thing. Uh, I think it's minus 90 degrees. There we go. So now the the lines are actually properly going where they they should, and the, and I'm gonna have like the the nice side over here and the caps over here. Now the caps, as you can see here, are engons. Engons are any sort of square or polygon that has more than four sides. So it's of course not a square. It's more like a hexagon or like a pentagon. And engons are not bad per se, but they could be problematic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this face and I'm gonna do the exact same thing, thing I just did with the, with the bottom of the grenade. I'm gonna go into edit mesh and I'm gonna hit poke. Do the same on this guy and poke. And as you can see, when we press number three, these guys become a little bit, um, what's the word, soft, right? So I'm going to go with my cut tool. I'm going to add one line right there and one line right there. So that way we get a sharper line. Now, I still don't have exactly what I want. I would like this thing to be on the other side. See that? However, if I just rotate this, I'm going to get the exact same thing. So I actually need to scale it, to mirror it to the other side. I'm going to show you an old way in which we used to mirror things um, before some of the new tools in Maya happened, which is going to help with this uh, with this guy. First, I'm going to uh, center pivot, delete history, freeze transformation. Now I'm going to go to my R key and I'm going to scale this in minus one. Minus one. There we go. So now, as you can see, we pretty much flipped the whole thing. And now, of course, we need to freeze transformation again. So this is a new rotation. And now we're good. You can see that we have the, the line exactly where we, where we need to. And the whole thing is looking good. Now I'm going to show you one little trick here that's going to make your, your modeling like go to the next level. This is the kind of thing that you sometimes don't see on, on all the other tutorials. We're going to add some variance. One of the, the main problems that we have as 3D artists is that things become way too perfect. Since we're making everything with computer and with angles and numbers, things become super perfect. And in the real world, there's always like mistakes or... or uh, uh, kinks or elements there here and there that change the way uh, elements work, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select this guy, press B, upper, uh, or, or just yeah, your B from uh, from B's. And I'm going to go into the options, to my move brush. And if I go to the soft selection, this is the soft selection mode. I'm going to go to the soft selection down here. I'm going to change the follow off mode from volume to surface. Now, this will allow me to move this thing slightly like that. See? So just by moving this, just by making sure it's not completely symmetrical, things are going to start looking way, way more natural because I would expect that the machine is making this uh, loop, this coil, and maybe the machine is not perfectly cal calibrated. So you're probably going to get a little bit of uh, D or asymmetry in certain parts of the element, which again, will make this thing look way, way nicer. Another thing I could do is I could just rotate this around. See how everything bends with the soft selection and we're going to get a very nice detail there. If you want to change the uh, fall off that the soft selection has, you can change with the with, this with a V. You just press B and middle mouse button and drag. And depending on how big the color gradient is, that's how much area you're going you're gonna to affect. And we're in a very good position. Again, proper way to do this. Phrase transformation, delete history, uh, center pivot. And we're going to call this SM as in a static mesh. M51 grenade and I'm going to call this um, loop. 
So now we have the M51 grenade body and the M51 grenade loop. As you can see, I've already positioned this outside of the of the main body of the grenade. We still don't know exactly where this thing is going to be. It's probably going to be a little bit closer to this part and probably rotate it like this. Uh, but right now, I'm just going to position it um, somewhere that I can easily move it. Now, a good way to work here inside of Maya is with layers. Uh, layers over here, display layers, are ways in which you can organize your models. And it's an easy way to keep your scene clean while you're working on other stuff. So in this particular case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both objects. I'm going to click this last button right here, which is create a new layer and assign the selected objects to that layer. And what that's going to do, as you can see here, it's going to ask me for a name. I'm going to call this finished pieces. And that's going to allow me to save the whole thing. So there we go. Now um, let's continue. If you go on this display layer and you press this V key, which is the visibility, you're going to turn that off. And that way we can work on everything else without having to worry about uh, the rest of the elements. So let's go with this thing and let's analyze how this thing looks and what this thing does. So as you can see, this thing uh, is blocked right now, of course, because of this pin, because of the loop. And uh, eventually, if you take the loop away, I believe you had to click this, like it had to go towards the grenade. It's not like taking it out. You, you need to take the pin out and then press the grenade. And that's what activates the, the fuse. So um, this thing, as you can see, it has a pivot point up here. So it's this sort of like very flat shape going all the way to the bottom here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the plane. I am going to start with a, probably, with, I'm actually going to start with a cube. I'm going to start with a cube just because it's going to be a little bit easier to, to see, but I'm going to change this to a plane. You're going to see how. So this thing is going to start probably about here, like this. And then from this phase right here, from this like lateral phase, I'm going to extrude like, like down here. And then from here, we're going to extrude again. And all this thing is going to go all the way to the bottom part here. Now, when you extrude like this, you definitely need to rotate to maintain a little bit of the volume. You can see that most of the volume is maintained. Now, I'm going to use my cut tool, and I'm going to do some crazy cuts along the, the surface of this object, like this. One, two, three, four. And by going into vertex mode, I can start moving these guys and, and capturing the relative curvature of this particular piece, like this. Now you can see here, we definitely need a little bit more polygons. So I'm going to add one more polygon there, probably about there. We can even go here, double click this edge. I'm going to bevel it, give it like like small fraction, a couple of more segments. So you get that round element right there. So the reason why I started with a cube is because it was a little bit easier for me to show you the general curvature of this uh, handle that we want. But now you can see that the handle is, it's not a cube, it's more like a like a weird looking element, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into perspective view. I'm going to select this first face and then shift double click this last face. And then I'm going to shift select everything else and I'm going to delete. That's going to leave me with just a plane, which is exactly what I'm uh, looking because I'm going to be working with this plane to create the rest of the element. Now, this is a symmetrical element. And right now, the symmetry that we're looking at is a C symmetry, right? So the front and the back of this piece should be the same. So it's a little bit easier if we only worry about one side of the symmetry so that we don't have to think about both sides at the same time. So I'm going to grab all of the vertices from this side. I'm going to press W and with X, I'm going to move these guys to the center. That way, we're going to be aligning everything to the grid. And I know that eventually I'm just going to mirror this piece to the other side and we're going to have uh, the full uh, yeah, the full, the full piece. So now it's, it's time that we do this sort of element right here. See how we have this very nice like uh, border on the whole thing? So what I'm going to do is the following. First, I'm going to add one line right about here. Even though this is a plane, the line has been added, as you can see right there. So that's very handy for me. And I'm going to grab one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. All of these edges, except for the last one. I'm going to leave this one alone. I'm going to go to my front view, and I'm going to extrude. And I'm going to extrude with offset, or rather thickness. See this? So that, as you can see, is creating this sort of like uh, border that we have here on our, on our element. Now we're going to go into vertex mode and we're going to start adjusting a couple of these things. So for instance, this one, I know it goes like back here. This one, we definitely need one extra line here. So I'm going to go in cut tool, cut one more line there. And then this one goes down here. And I'm going to utilize the, the points that we have here to create all of this shape right here. And see how I'm just pushing all of these guys 
to where they're supposed to be. Like that, that. This one's gonna go like this. This one like this. It shouldn't be that thick. It becomes thinner as well as we go towards the, the end here. And there we go. If we take a look at the perspective, look at the shape. That's what we're going for. This is the, the kind of shape that we're looking for because I know that when I press number three, we're gonna get this very, very nice uh, effect right here. Now, there's a couple of things that we still need to do. Don't worry about like this weird effect right there on the on the border, that's that's completely fine. But there's a couple of things that we need to, to fix before we start uh, adding more, more details here. For instance, this thing becomes this sort of like hinge right here. And that's important. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to the top view. I'm gonna add one line right about here, grab this edge, Extrude it forward like this, go to my front view, and then extrude it down, and then extrude it forward again, and then forward again to create this sort of uh, round shape. To make it even rounder, we can of course grab, for instance, this edge, this edge, and this edge, and just bevel it. Bevel is a really good tool because as you can see, it really like softens and rounds things off, runs things off, and we get this effect. So now we need to add thickness to the whole thing. So I'm just going to control E the object and I'm just going to extrude out like this. And as you can see, that's going to add thickness to the whole element. So it's going to start looking a lot closer to what we have there on our, uh, uh, on our um, reference. The only issue with adding thickness is by only having one division there, things become really flimsy, like really, really thin. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all of the faces here on the inside. One quick way to do this, go to the top view grab all of, the, of these faces and then control shift or control to remove all that selection and only the guys on the on the center line are gonna be selected. You just delete those guys and we're good to go. So now, before I do the mirror, I'm gonna add some support edges to make sure that this thing looks a little bit sharper. And the way we're gonna do this is I'm gonna use my uh, cut tool. Let's add one support edge right there, one support edge right there and one right there. As you can see, those are immediately gonna fix that issue that we had, see? Now everything's sharper, everything's nicer. And then we're gonna add one support edge right here and one right here. So that when we press number three, the, the whole thing does not look as flimsy as it looked before. And look at this beautiful thing. It's exactly what we have on the reference with the curvature that it's following, with this little element right here, this little like hole where uh, there's gonna be like a, uh, some sort of pivot point or something. And, uh, and we have this thing. The only thing that I'm missing, and I actually waited until the very end to show you how to fix this, is as you can see, we have a, a very interesting thing right there. Give me just one second. It seems like my camera is acting up. Let me, let me try to fix this. Oh, is it working now? Sorry, technical issues. Let me just turn this off, disconnect it. And let's see if by turning it on again, we can fix this. And one more second here. Whoa, that's very big. Okay, I'm just gonna, one more try. Let's turn this off and turn this back on again. I'll promise that this will be fixed next time we do this. It's very weird, I'm, it usually doesn't work like this. There we go, that's that's better. Is it working? Yeah, perfect. So let's continue. So as you can see, we have this loop going above this sort of uh, metal thing, and that's probably the point where this whole piece is gonna pivot from. However, that's a little bit of a complicated bit. It's not that difficult, but it's a little bit tricky. So let me show you. I know that that specific piece starts up here, like on this on this section right here. So I'm gonna add one line right there. It's gonna make this thing a little bit sharper, but that's fine. And then from the front view, I know that this thing right here needs to somehow connect to another place, probably on this side. So I'm also gonna add one more line here, and I need to connect this section over here with this section over here, right? Like there's, there needs to be a connection. It, it, it can't be just any connection. It needs to be some sort of round connection to follow the whole thing. Oh my God. Sorry about the camera, guys. I'm not sure what's 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 going on here. Okay, that, that, that seems to work. Let's keep it like that. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this face, delete this face, and then I'm going to select this, this guy and this guy, and I'm going to bridge. Bridge is going to create a connection from one point to the other, which is fine. And then we're going to do the same for the underside here, this one and this one. We're going to select um, another bridge. We're going to create the bridge there. And now, of course, we need to add a couple of divisions. So I'm going to bridge from here from and, and here just to close the hole from here to here. There we go. I'm going to go to the front view. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a cylinder. Bring the cylinder all the way to the top here so that we match the curvature that we need to find. So this guy is going to sit right about here. And now what I can do is I can add a couple of cuts here. And I can move this vertices in such a way that we respect those elements. See, so, so I'm creating, I'm creating the curvature. Now, one important thing is we need to try and keep the volume, like try, try and find the, the specific way in which these things are going to are gonna match. I know that when I press number three, everything is gonna soften up, but but I don't wanna rely too heavily on, on number three. I'm actually seeing here that maybe it wasn't the best decision to to bridge this at this position. So I'm just gonna delete these faces. I am gonna bridge this thing back together so that, that hole is closed. I'm gonna delete this face and I'm gonna uh, bridge it here. I think that's gonna look a little bit nicer. There we go. So now we can go to the front view again, grab my cut tool and use the vertex here to, to try and match the, the roundness of this specific piece. So now when I press number three, you're gonna see that this thing is very closely following the, the element there. I also think that we might've missed this one right here. I think this is a little bit too high. So I'm gonna delete that guy create a new line over here. Sorry about the camera, guys. I'll, I'll, I'll check what's going on in just a second. But I don't want to interrupt the stream or the, the video. So let's just bridge here. We bridge, or well, not there, actually. It's right here. There we go. Grab this guy right here. Oh, well, before we, we delete that face, let's let's fix this face so that we have both walls. And now we just bridge from here to here. Go in here and then just bridge this final element right there. Perfect. So now this whole thing is looking a lot nicer. We can go to the front view. We can again play around with the vertices here so that when we press number three, this becomes as round as possible. And uh, it's not going all the way to the border. So one thing I can do is I can actually grab these faces just push them back a little bit like this. This edges might benefit from, from actually going back as well, like this. And now again, to, to keep this a little bit sharper, we can add a couple of support edges, for instance, right here on the inside and probably one on the outside like this. And that's gonna make it look way, way nicer. It, it was very important that we did the extrusion first for the whole thing before we did this element, because otherwise trying to do this with a plane would create a lot of a lot of, uh, of the, uh, yeah, problematic elements on the on the piece. So that's that's looking way, way nicer. And now we can finally do the mirror. So I'm just gonna select this guy, this guy, go into Windows, sorry, Mesh, Mirror, and I'm gonna say that I want to mirror this on the world axis, Z negative, and hit Apply and we should get this very, very nice part. Now, we already have the cylinder, and I know that we're gonna be using this cylinder to create the rest of the of the grenade. So I'm actually just gonna extrude it out so that we know the, where, where this thing ends, which is roughly about there. And from this piece, we're gonna create the, the rest of the element. Very well, let's continue. I, I, I think I fixed the camera. Hopefully we don't get any more uh, mistakes. I'm not sure if it's like a USB thing or something, but uh, we're back, we're back. So let's continue with this. So this thing, it's ready. We're just gonna center the pivot point, delete the history, freeze transformation, and we're gonna call this, again, a static mesh, uh, M51 grenade, and this is gonna be handle. There we go. And we can just click this guy, right click on finish pieces and se uh, select add selected object. That's gonna get rid of that guy and now uh, we're good to continue with the, with the rest of the elements. So 
we're only missing very simple pieces. We have this thing right here, which is, uh, I believe, the, the housing for the fuse, uh, which has just an interesting shape here, like a, like a cone shape. And then there's this little uh, cable that I think goes all the way around and then comes back through this thing and then goes all the way back around and, and becomes this element right here. One thing you can definitely do is go online and check other parts of the thing, like see if we can, if we can find other views of the element just to make sure that we're capturing all the details that we need. Sometimes it might be difficult because there's there's not a lot of reference. For this particular grenade, um, it should be fairly easy to find all the information. So here I can see that, yeah, this thing makes this sort of like square. And then there's this thing, uh, it's like a butterfly pin that goes across the, the handle there. So one thing that we did miss on the handle, and uh, let, me, let me bring this back, I'm just gonna select this guy right click, remove selected objects so that it's out of the element, is that we need to create the pin through which the uh, little hole is gonna happen. And it's actually very simple. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a line right about here and then another one right about here. Those support edges shouldn't make your object look uh, any more like hard surfacey than it already is. But what it will do is it will create this square shape that I can just select and delete. And whenever you have a square and you smooth, you're gonna get a circle, see that? So I just need to select this guys and this guys and go and make a bridge and definitely add a support edge on the inside on both sides so that we get that little hole right there. Now I'm going to go into mesh and I'm just going to mirror again. And now the hole is going to be on the other side as well. So just add two lines, make this square like shape and uh, delete the faces, bridge them together and we get the, the hole there. Delete history, we don't need to rename or anything because it's just it's just a history. And that's it, we can just right click here and add selected objects. Now that pin is, uh, it's like a butterfly pin. So what I'm gonna do is the following. I'm, I'm actually gonna bring this guy back because I think we need it. And we're gonna start using curves because for this thing that we're gonna do now, curves usually work a little bit better. So I'm gonna go to the right view so that we see this thing from the side. And what I'm gonna do is I am gonna pinpoint where my hole is. I can even just like grab like this under, control D. Let's make it smaller. Let's go to the front view, position this where the hole is. And I'm just gonna use this as a reference, right? Just to know where the hole is gonna be. Now, if we go to the right view, I'm gonna go into create, create uh, curve tools, and I'm gonna create this thing called EP curve. And what I wanna create is just a pin. So I'm just gonna start creating a curve here, right? I think my curve's trying to turn off, there we go. So I'm gonna go one, two, three. We're gonna go through this thing, create a little bit of a loop, and then go back. And we're gonna have this, this sort of like, just it's just a simple like wire pin, right? Because usually when you pull the pin, this should fairly easily release the, the whole thing. These things are just slightly bent to prevent an accidental uh, uh, pin extraction. And here I'm just gonna use my control vertices on the curb to to modify the, the curvature a little bit and create this sort of like round shape here that's uh, keeping this thing from, from actually like activating before time. Now, why are we using a curve instead of uh, a polygon? Because we're gonna be extruding, extruding along this curve. That's gonna give us a very nice effect. So what we're gonna do now is we just need to create the wire, right? Because this wire right here, I know that this uh, specific shape is gonna be going through this uh, hole right here. We can actually delete this guy. And of course, this thing is gonna be holding the pin together, right? You can see that the, that the pin on the image plane, it's, uh, it's kind of like hugging the surface of the element. So I'm actually gonna bring this thing closer to the hole just to make sure that this thing is wide enough to, to hold the, the pin. So as you can see here, we might need a little bit more, more uh, width. So I'm gonna go into my control vertices and just push this out a little bit more you said that, that there's enough room here, right? Something like that. There we go. Now I'm gonna create a new cylinder and I'm gonna use the letter C. Letter C snaps to curve. You can see this thing up here, which is the, the magnet that snaps to a curve. I'm gonna middle click and snap this guy to the curve so that we move it all the way to the beginning of the, of the position there. I'm gonna change the options here to just eight sides. I don't need uh, as many sides. And then I'm gonna select all the cap faces of the object, like all of those caps, select the curve and extrude. And by doing so, as you can see, the extrusion is gonna go from the beginning of the curve all the way to the end. 
if I add more divisions to the extrusion, you're going to see that we create this very nice pin effect. Look at that beautiful thing. And it's doing exactly what we want. It's going through the hole. It's following the curve. It's going around our pin. And then it's coming back through the hole again, creating this very nice uh, effect. Finally, you're just going to delete history, first transformation, and the curve, we actually don't need it anymore. So if you want, you can delete it. And this is the, the thing that we're going to use. If I press number three, that looks very nice. I think I'm going to go to my right view. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my vertex just to push this thing so that it holds the surface of my pin a little bit closer. Like I really want this thing to hug the, the surface as tightly as possible. So I'm just going to manually move these things out here. I don't really care about the, the little overlap that we have here on the inside. If you're like super OCD, you can, of course, change it. But I don't think it's a big deal because it's it's not going to be seen. Like this is going to be hidden. The thing that I do care about is the end here. So I'm probably going to grab this cap and this cap. And I'm just going to bevel this, guys. So make the fraction smaller, probably one segment. And that way, when we press number three, it's going to be really nice. Now we can definitely grab this guy. I'm going to press the letter D to move the pivot point, move the pivot point up here and then rotate it so that it's sitting right there on the grenade like this. Grab all the objects, uh, delete history, freeze transformation. We don't need to center pivot anymore because I actually want the pivot point of this thing to be up here so that if we need to animate it later on, we can just animate from there. Uh, this pin, that's fine. Again, eventually what's going to happen is I'm going to probably like pull this out and then move this. And with this, everything's just going to, is just going to follow. Um, yeah, yeah, so things looking good. I'm just going to grab the name of the handle here. Control C, go into the wire and just call this pin wire. And now we have one, two, three, four, five elements ready to go. We're just missing one more thing, I believe, or two more things. It's the, the little like square like wire that goes around and the, the housing of the of the fuse up here. So we're very close to finishing. Uh, remember, this tutorial is meant to be a showcase of how to use all the different tools that we um, that we use in the 3D world. I don't expect you guys to be following at the same time, at the same speed. Of course, this usually takes time. My best suggestion is just pause the video after I finish each specific piece and try to do it yourself. Go back if you need to change or check one of the tools that we're using, and then just keep moving until you get the, the exact same result. It's, it's just a matter of practicing. So I'm pretty sure that if I was able to do it and learn it, you guys will be able to do so as well. Uh, I need to save. I haven't saved. I've been working for 42 minutes. We're at 42 minutes. Thank you. Thank you guys for staying so long and, and learning all of these things with us. So I'm going to save this scene. It's going to be saved on our project, on the scenes file, and I'm going to call this M51 Grenade. There we go. So now let's continue. Let's do the, the housing of the fuse. So if we take a look at the, at the housing of the fuse, where's my image plane? Did I delete it? It's right there. I turn it off. There we go. You can see that it's pretty much just a square. It has this thing attached to it, which is just a sort of metal bit. Uh, but it's it's pretty much just like a square. The only interesting thing is this sort of like cone that it has here on the side, which is where the little uh, wire that goes around um, kind of starts or probably is appended to. There's this hole right here, and there's another like pin over here that I'm not sure if it's function, but it's it's there. So I'm gonna start with a square, just a cube. Make this roughly the size of the of the housing here, which is about there. Very important that we check everything in relation to the rest of the things that we've did before. So I know that it's not going to be completely square. It's going to be more like a rectangle like this. There we go. Uh, I can see that the, that the corners here are slightly rounded on this side. And then we have some sort of like extrusion creating this hold for this element right here. So I'm going to do something similar to what we did with the with the handle. I am going to delete the cap face back here. And then I'm going to snap the, the vertices to the center line because this is going to be symmetrical, of course, right? So so let's figure out this, uh, this combination here first. So I know that I want this corner to be a little bit rounder. So I'm going to add one, two lines. And then this line, I'm going to push inwards. And this line, I'm also going to push slightly inwards. And that's automatically going to make this thing look a little bit rounder. It's kind of like if we did a bevel. However, if we did a bevel, we would create some angles on the top here. And that's not something that I want for this particular piece. And then from this thing, there seems to be some sort of like inner line here. Let me delete history. 
Oh, we have this issue. Okay, this this sometimes happens. Did I? Yeah. So Maya Maya somehow froze. That that's fine. It, it, it sometimes happens. It's, it's this some, this sort of uh, display uh, bug. Uh, it, it's a little bit annoying, but I'm gonna solve this real quick. I'm just gonna save this real quick. Let's close Maya. As you can see, it, it won't close, so I'm just gonna have to kill it. I saved first, of course, because I don't want to lose all the progress that we have right now. So let's just kill it real quick. Again, 3D software packages, they sometimes crash, they sometimes bug out. So it's just a matter of knowing how to deal with them. My best advice is save often, save in different versions that usually um, make sure that everything works very, very fine. So let's just wait for this to, to load. In in the next couple of chapters, guys, in the next couple of sessions where we uh, go around the, the Maya interface, I'll, I'll show you a couple of tricks to make sure Maya loads super, super fast because that's, that's one thing that people struggle with. So I'm just going to open my scene here. Set the project. There we go. And the format scenes, we have the M151 grenade. And yeah, we're, we're back in business. So what I wanted to do was I just wanted to add one line right about there. And then this square, this face, I'm going to extrude forward just a little bit. I'm going to go to my front view. It's just a very simple extrusion there like this and see how we got this shape going forward so I'm going to use another insertion here I'm going to grab this face right there on the front I'm going to extrude forward and then this thing is going to be creating this sort of like triangular shape right here I think we can move all of these guys a little bit up like this and we're going to get this so I know that this thing or this line it's probably going to merge uh, with the rest of the element. So that means that the depth of this thing should probably match the depth of the of the handle right there. And I probably need to open a little bit of a hole here so that this thing and the cylinder merge together. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to this phase right here, which is one, two, probably three three and four, probably all of this faces. I'm just going to delete the face. I'm going to grab this thing. Now, the cool thing is our transformations are clean, so I can actually move this thing up. And now those four faces that I deleted. Oh, actually. No, that's fine. That's fine. Let's. I'm going to grab this guy. I'm going to press this button, which is isolate select. It will isolate this piece so that we can work with this. I'm going to grab these edges right here, the ones that we just deleted. And I'm going to move them so that they match with the distance that I need to capture. And then we had uh, one, two, three, four. So that's probably going to be one, two, three, and four. Like those faces we need to, to delete as well. And we need to bridge, of course. So one and one, we bridge. And down here, one and one, we bridge. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we bridge. One, two, three, oh, three, four, six, seven, eight, and we bridge. And there we go. So now we've created the hole here. Now I would imagine that this hole actually goes all the way through because we need to mirror the whole thing on the on the other side. So let's just Again, quick way to do this, top view, delete half of it, and then this face is gone, and we just, go, we just go mesh, and we mirror again. Magic, right? So always work smart, not hard. So instead of doing it twice on both sides, this just saves us a lot of problems. I'm going to use my cut tool to add one line here, one support line there, and one support line there, so that when we smooth this thing out, it remains very, very nice, very sharp, like this. Yeah, I really like that. I think I'm going to add one line here, again, to, to help me keep everything sharp. Although, no, that gives me an angle, so well, let's keep it like that. Like, there's a little bit of a pinch there, like a, a weird, like, very thin layer. I think we can solve it by adding one line here and here. Yeah, that alleviates the, the tension a little bit. But now we have the hole, which is what we what we were waiting for, right? So this thing, we only delete history because the names and everything are already already good. The only thing I need to do now is I need to merge these two pieces together, right? I need to combine the this block 
with a cylinder. So first things I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the caps here, bring these things down to about there. And the easiest way to, to merge these things is to just add enough lines that this thing just fits on the, on the, on the element, in this case on, on this block. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my cut tool, add one line right about there. And then I'm going to delete this face all the way to this face. I am going to probably grab this guy, push the face back a little bit and delete it. Now we need to combine both objects. I'm going to select both objects. I'm going to go into edit mesh or mesh combine to combine them into a single object. Now grab these two vertices, merge to center, two vertices, merge to center. So they're combined uh, on this lower side. I think I'm just going to move this with V with V point, which is snap to point, just move them together and merge those vertices as well. So now both the top and the bottom side are combined. I just need to add a couple of lines here. So you can see we have one, two, three, four. So we're going to add one, two, three, and four. That's one way to do it. There's always a lot of ways to do it. This is just the one I think is simpler for this particular exercise. Grab this vertices, snap to point, move it here, snap to point, which is the V key, the one at the, the V from, uh, from uh, vacation. So grab this guy here and here. And we're going to grab this guys, merge to center, this guys, merge to center, this guys, merge to center, this guys, and merge to center. So now, as you can see, everything is merged together. The only thing that we need is to add a support line. So as, let's add one support line there. Let's add one support line here. So everything becomes really, really sharp. Probably one support line there. And we get this very nice looking organic shape. I'll probably add one support line right here and one support line here. Now, of course, this line right here needs to go away because eventually we're going to mirror this thing to the other side, right? So that's how we uh, combine two elements right there. Uh, do we have an angle? No, that's not an angle. We probably could have one more support line down here. We're going to we're going to worry about that in just a second because we still need to do the the cone shape that we get here with that with the wire, right? Like this thing right there. So now, since we have a lot of divisions here, one very cool thing is that we should be very, or we can very easily create this uh, hole right here. So I'm going to do is I'm going to add one more line here and here. Now you can see we have this, uh, these faces. I'm actually going to add one more line so that we get eight faces. I'm going to select those eight faces and delete them. And there's one very cool tool that we have in the newest Maya versions, which is the uh, edit mesh circularize, which will give us a circle, which as you can see, very, very handy. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Now we go to the front view. And the only thing that we're missing, I think, for this particular part is this sort of like cone shape here. So I'm going to create a cone, of course. Bring this to the top. Make this sort of like cone shape here that we need to append to the whole thing. I'm going to lower the, the, the uh, lines to like eight. Eight. There we go. And then I'm just going to push this to the, to the, to the side here. It's probably narrower like this. I'm going to delete the lower cap here and half of this thing. So we only have the, the outer half like this. And now we're going to do a very similar process. Like we need to find a way to, to combine this thing and, and create the, uh, the housing, right? So what I'm going to do is combine these two objects. So mesh combine. So they're a single object. And uh, for instance, we already have a line here. So that's, that's easy. We can just delete this face. Uh, or actually, let's let's add one line first, right around the, the tip area. We can delete one, two, three. Let's delete all of these faces. And then this vertex, we're going to snap it, snap it there. Or actually, this guy, we're just going to snap it here. And then these guys, we can move them together a little bit. Merge to center. This guy, we snap it there. This guy, we're going to snap it right there. This guy was going to snap it oh, to this new direction right there. Yeah, that looks good. Now, this is a triangle. Triangles are fine. So we can just select one, two, and bridge. We're going to create a triangle. 
This is a square. I'm not particularly fond of this square, but let's just keep it for now. It's just like a little bit of an ugly topology. I mean, of course, we can move this thing up or we can just grab these two guys and merge to center. So we create a, a triangle there. Triangles are not bad. People, people give a bad rap to triangles, but they're actually fine as long as you know where and how to use them. So for instance, here we can have one and two. That's a nice square. We have one and two. That's another nice square. And then just to keep things balanced, I'm just going to move this thing like here. And we can just uh, bridge that last triangle right there. So now if I press number three, you're going to see that we have a little bit of a weird pinch here. I'm not sure where that is happening. And we're going to go to the front view. I'm going to use my cut tool and I'm going to cut one line all the way through the bottom. That's going to keep things sharper, as you can see there. There seems to be a, a problem with this face. Sometimes that happens. That's fine. There's a very easy solution. For instance, now we have a square. We can go from here to here and just uh, just create a snap there. I'll probably do another cut right about here. And that's going to should keep things a little bit sharper. Probably one more cut right about here. And every every face should be square. Like we shouldn't be having any sort of like weird shapes. I'm going to say mesh display soft edge. I'm a little bit worried about that pinch right there. That means that there's some sort of bursy there that's not like combining properly, which is weird. So let's delete these things very quickly. Well, let's let's do one by one. So I'm going to delete that guy and then just rebuild with bridge. OK, let's delete this guy. And rebuild with bridge. OK, yeah, so as you can see, there's there's some weird vertice there that's just like moving things wrongly. Let's rebuild and rebuild. Yeah, it's really weird. It's, it's it seems to be like a niche or something here that's causing the, the issue. Sometimes that's happened. That happens. Let's fix it real quick. Uh, let me try something different. Yeah, so as you can see, it's this bird see right here. So it seems like from here to here, we shouldn't have any problems. Yeah, that seems to be fairly easy. So it's this face right here that's causing the issues. Where is this coming? There we go. See that that crazy vertices there? There we go. So it's those vertices right there. I'm just going to delete the vertices. Delete this face as well. Let's delete here. Sometimes you need to delete a little bit here and there just to fix some stuff, and then we can just rebuild. As long as things start looking better, that means that there was some crazy vertices there. So you just rebuild here with a bridge like that. Okay, that looks good. Rebuild here with the bridge like that. That looks good. Rebuild here with a bridge. That should be a triangle. Another option is using the mesh display. I'm sorry, mesh tools. Uh, a pen to polygon tool. We go from here to here. It's also valid. And then just bridge here, here, here. And finally, there. See? Now, very, very clean. We get that nice cone looking shape. Uh, we also have a little bit of a pinch here. Let's fix it. Oh, it seems to be like a crazy vertex there. Oop. Okay, that merge to center uh, seems to fix it. And there we go. So now this hole right here, uh, we're, we can't do the thickness thing that we did before with the handle because it will create more problems. So for this one, I'm just going to do a quick little trick here. I'm just going to extrude this thing inwards like this and then extrude out like this to create some sort of like a, like a border like a lip. So when people look at this thing, it should give us a nice little element there. I am going to select all of these edges. Let's see if we can bevel them without creating angles. It seems like we can. And that's going to keep a very nice soft circle right there. So now we grab the whole thing and we're just going to mirror to the backside. And we got the whole like fuse case right there. Now it's time that we start fixing some uh, issues here, right? Like the fact that if we look at the front view, this is not sitting on top of the of the actual grenade. It seems like the grenade has a, some sort of lip there, like this border here that we didn't add. So let's add it real quick. So I'm going to go to the body here, grab this face right here, and I'm just going to extrude up like this all the way to where the, the casing stops. It seems to be going inwards as well. So I'm going to select this face, Control-E, Offset, and then Control-E, 
I'm going to thickness this inwards like this. Grab our edges like this guy, this guy, whoop, this guy, and this guy, bevel. So when we press number three, we get that very nice look there. Now, here's where we need to take some artistic liberties, meaning that there might be certain things that look a little bit too thin. For instance, this casing here looks a little bit weird. It should be covering pretty much the whole thing. So I'm going to center the pivot point here and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so that we actually cover most of the of the area on the grenade like this. And that means that this thing, of course, also needs to be scaled up a little bit. And that means that this thing's right here. I mean, this thing right here needs to be scaled a little bit more. And this is just going to be moved uh, out like this, right? Probably like this and like this. And we get this very nice completed a grenade right here. Cool. I think we're just missing this little wire right here. It's the last part. We're already at the one hour mark. If you've been following along for all this time, thank you guys. Thank you for, for sticking around. Hopefully you're learning a lot of stuff from this uh, very nice tutorial. And uh, yeah, let's just let's just finish this thing. And this thing, we're going to do the exact same thing we did with the, with the wire here. I'm going to go to my top view. And based on one, uh, what I saw, we're going to start with a create curve tools. EP curve, we're going to start right here and we're going to go out and then up like this. And then we're going to go under the grenade. And it seems like we go across the grenade to create something like this. Let's move this on oh, that creates like a square at the end. So I, I missed that one. So that one goes from underneath the grenade right about there. And now it's just a matter of grabbing the control vertices and making this thing look a little bit nicer. So for instance, grab this guys, bring this guys up. You can see this guy coming here, like all of these guys, we can scale them. So one of the very cool things about curves, you can actually scale curve points and create some very nice effects. So something like this, we create this very sharp line here. And then going on the back, it's probably not going to go all the way to the back. So just scale them down probably about this area, I would even I would be inclined to think that this wire goes like underneath here. It, it, it kind of makes sense to, to hide it. So it's not clipping anything that it shouldn't. Our, our actually probably goes through the side like this. Yeah, that, that makes a little bit more sense than all of this guys very straight lines. And then here at the end, it, it, it kind of it kind of hugs the surface of the of the handle. So let's push this guys closer together to the handle. And then back here, oh, this guys create this sort of like shape. Uh, I would imagine that this guys go down like this. And then we create like a it kind of goes down and then it creates like a square on the other side. So let's rotate this guys around. And since I ran out of points, that's fine. I'm going to show you how I would solve this. I'm just going to keep this very straight like a square and then keep this very straight as well. So we have the, the general like uh, trail of the of the element. I'm going to create a new cylinder here. Go to the options and we're going to change this to again, eight uh, divisions. The reason why we want eight divisions is because it's a, it's a low enough number. Letter C and we're going to snap this to the curve. There we go. Snap this all the way to the, to the beginning of the curve. There we go. Rotate this 90 degrees grab the caps. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, grab the curve, and we extrude. Now, one of the issues that we're going to have here is even if we do the full divisions 25, it's still not enough. So feel free to just add like 50 divisions. That's that's completely fine. And you're going to see that with that. Uh, now we're going to have the cable going all the way around. So I'm just going to grab the object, hit delete history. And now let's fix some of this stuff. Because as you can see here, for instance, the 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 twist there, it's, it's not looking very good. Neither is it looking good here. So we're just going to fix this. 
And now it's a lot easier to just grab uh, like this faces right here and complete the points that we were missing. So I know that this guy is going to keep going forward. And then we're going to extrude, rotate, extrude, go up. Again, we can fix the volume here by, by scaling these guys a little bit. And then extrude, whoa, the faces. Extrude, we up, extrude, around, push forward, extrude, and we finish our development right there. Look at that amazing thing. So this is it. This is this is the final the final little detail that we were missing. If I press number three, you can see that the that the cable is looking very nice. One last thing I can do, of course, is I can add a little bit of a support edge right here and probably at the beginning, just to keep it keep it sharp. And now we just need to rename. So there's a couple of things that we need renaming. So just grab everything, delete history, freeze transformation. I'm just gonna copy the name here. This is gonna be called uh, grenade cable. And this is grenade uh, housing, let's call this. And perfect, look at this beautiful model. It took us a little bit over an hour to finish this thing, which is, is normal. I would say that this is a, a fairly, I would say it's like a mid-level model. Someone that has a little bit of experience with Maya should be able to do this. If you're just beginning, beginning with Maya, don't worry. Try it. Try it. Maybe you're, you're also going to be able to do it. The tools that I use are some of the most simple tools that we have uh, right now. And uh, and as you can see, it looks it looks very nice. So now let's do a little bit of cleanup here for the scene. I'm going to delete the image plane. We don't need it anymore. We have our, our element ready to go into the next phase, which would be uh, texturing. So I'm just going to grab the whole thing. Again, delete history, freeze transformation to make sure everything is clean. And if we go into the outliner, which is this button down here, this is all the elements that we have. So as you can see, there's a curve there. I don't want it anymore. Let's just delete it. I'm going to grab all the elements and I'm going to press Control G. Control G will group them together. That way, if I want to move them around, scale them together, or just modify them as a whole, I'm just going to be able to do it with this group. And of course, this group is going to be called SM Grenade Group. And that's it. That's pretty much it. I'm going to save the scene and uh, and we're ready to go. So hopefully, guys, you've learned a lot from this uh, video. I hope you stay tuned for more videos that we're going to be producing. This is, of course, for you to learn and for you to improve your 3D art. We also have some more premium courses. So I strongly advise to check the, the comments down here. All the links are going to be uh, linked there in the description. Uh, make sure to like us, follow us, subscribe, do all the things that you know uh, so that we can keep producing this uh, amazing stuff for you guys. And uh, if you have any questions or anything, feel free to, feel free to leave them in the comments as well. So that's it for me, guys. It's been a pleasure to share all of these techniques with you. Hopefully you've learned a lot throughout this hour. Thank you for hanging around and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.